People will see this as Jesus Christ. Because Amen. what? We just read that they laid open our books and they painted their images. When you go into the church, you don't see Moses as a black man. You see Moses as a white man. When you close your eyes to pray, you don't see God as a black man. You see God as a white man. This is what has happened to us in slavery. This image has been embedded and planted in us and we must uproot it and cast it away. Your nationality, when you look on the sign, is you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah if you're considered American black. Is that what you're considered today? An American black? So, guess what? God says there ain't no such thing as American black. Right. That name was given to you in slavery. And actually, Jesse Jackson coined this on us in the early 1980s. He started calling us right. African American. You ain't African Americans. You are the Jews according to God. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Come on. Remember the Sabbath day. I got a question, sister. What's your name? My name is Free Spirit Empress. Free Spirit Empress. So Free Spirit Empress, I got a question. Why does the scripture say this? Read that again. Remember the Sabbath day. Why God told the children of Israel to remember the Sabbath day? I have no idea, but my termination was the day of rest. It's the day of rest. You're right. You would be 100% correct. He said, remember that the Sabbath day is a day of rest. Why? Because obviously we were going to forget it. Right. We were going to forget the Sabbath day. So I got a question, Miss Empress. What is the Sabbath day? Sabbath. What is the day of rest? Which day? Saturday. What? Saturday. Saturday. That's According today. To, yes. That's this today. Is Sabbath day. But so look out here. Let's look out here, Sister Empress. When we look out here, the same people that I said, do you love God? They said yes. But God said what? Remember the Sabbath day. Do they remember the Sabbath day? You can't. It, we can't be different. You know why? You know you're right. We can't be because because God said what? So one human. God said what? One humanity. No, no, no. Let's not, let's not go too far. We're all not chosen now. We all. Yeah, the Israelites. Only the Israelites. You're right. We're all not chosen. The Israelites are chosen. The Israelites are chosen. The Israelites are chosen. But let's stay on topic. Well, let's, that's not okay. straight. We'll deal with that, though. But we can't be of a different understanding. Give me uh, now, well, Second Peter chapter 1 and 20. Second, Pe Second Peter and chapter 1 and verse 20 real it's quick. It's our job. You've been chosen by our ancestors. The book of Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20. Come on. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture, no prophecy in this Bible, come on, is of any private interpretation. You hear that, sister? No scriptures is of any private interpretation, meaning that what's in the scriptures is what is in the scriptures. Right. I have to go by what the scriptures say and not my own. Give me talk, Proverbs yeah, yeah, chapter 3 and question. verse 5. You what's your question? What, what Bible or what Torah? We or are reading from the from? King James 1611 wow. version. So you know who King, King, yeah, we know exactly who King James is. We know exactly who he is. Give me the uh, and, and so, give me so the you know who William Shakespeare is as we, well. William Sh Shakespeare ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. Oh, really? Shakespeare has nothing to Remember do with the Bible. Remember, the Bible has a lot of Listen, stories, and Shakespeare look up, was with uh, King James, James, King James making up some of them Bible. stories. King James, Bible. Bible. King James ain't made up nothing. We're gonna show you that. Well, he that's tried. A, that's that's he the tried. Mis that's the misconception that most people have. All We're right, gonna well, show enlighten you this. me. Read enlighten this. Me. Real, read this. Enlighten real quick. me. Bible, King James version. What version? King James Version. What was before the King James Version? That's the question. Because our people always say what? The King James Version and the white man wrote the book. The white man ain't writing nothing. 
right. The white man, the white man has no authority to write nothing. The book was already written. So before it was King the James, the scrolls of mine. No, no, no. You are wrong again, sister. We're gonna read. Find out. It was the scrolls of mine. King James Bible. When Elizabeth died in 1603, Elizabeth, she died in 1603, Queen Elizabeth. The crown passed to James I. The crown passed to James the First. Come on. Who had been King of Scotland for he, what? King of Scotland for 37 years. So King James was already the King of Scotland for 37 years. What? Was he white or was he black? I don't know. He was a black man, of course. He was a I black. You know he was a and black man, was, according to history. To he was. He was a so-called Moor. Right. All mixed King through. James was a so-called Moor. He right. was a black man. Now he was the king of who? The king of Scotland for thirty-seven years. Come on. As yeah. James the sixth. He was as James the sixth. Come on. Several months after he ascended the throne of England. So now Queen Elizabeth died. Now he ascends the throne in England. Come on. He authorized, he did what? He authorized, he authorized, come on, a new translation of the Bible to replace the Bishop's Bible. So before the King James Version was made, there was the Bible called the Bishop's Bible. Now, what was the Bishop, what was the Bishop's Bible written in? Do y'all know? Y'all know a little bit about history? And if you don't know it, this is not a attack, we're just trying to find out. So before the King James Version, he had it translated from the Bishop's Bible. Let's see what he did. Come on. 47. Where's the Bishop's Bible from? The Bishop's Bible it has the original. We're going to find out. We're going to read. We're gonna, let, let's read on. It's going to tell us. Read. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day were divided into six groups. So okay. the All Bishop's right. Bible was written in what? It was written in Hebrew. Because if I gave you a, sisters, oh, I'm talking to all y'all, sisters, if I gave you a Hebrew Bible right now, could you read it? No, you don't speak Hebrew. If I gave you a Hebrew Bible, you wouldn't know what's going on in the Bible. You just see a, a bunch of look like cursive, you don't really know. So King James, he authorized the translation of the Bishop's Bible from what? Read it again. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the they day. They were the best Hebrew and Greek scholars during King James's time, read. Were divided into six groups. They were divided into six groups. Somebody get me a 1611 Bible right there. Three for the Old Testament. So you had three that translated the Old Testament. Two for the New. Two for the New. Come on, Elijah. And one for the Apocrypha. One for the Apocrypha. Now, the Bible that you have today in church, when you go to church, you pull that Bible up, the Gideon's Bible. Is there a book in it called the Apocrypha? Is there a book in it called the Apocrypha? I want you to show the sisters in this Bible that the translation that we have today is the original translation from King James. It has the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Apocrypha. But when you go to your church today, you're not going to see an Apocrypha. In fact, I almost can guarantee you never even heard of the Apocrypha. You never heard of it. Who has the red, who has the red book? I want to show. This is, this is the Apocrypha. You see this? This is the rest of the Bible that was in the original King James translation. The right. question you gotta ask yourself now is, why did they take this out? Why, why did the Protestant church in the what, early 1700s? The control to conquer. Yes, that is a big part of it. So question sisters, now you gotta question yourself. Well, if King James translated that, why did they take it out? Right. I'm gonna show you a little bit of history right quick. When you read the current Bible that you got, it goes from uh, Egyptian all the way to Persian captivity in Malachi, right? It stops in Malachi. That is the Persian and Mede captivity. Right. How do you jump in history? If you look at a timeline in history, you got Persian Mede captivity, and then the Bible jumps straight to the Roman cap Roman captivity. Right. Something is missing. What is missing? What is missing when we read the Bible? You can't just go to Roman uh, to Roman history because there was a history before Rome. Right. What was the history before Rome? Who was it? The Greeks. That's right. The right. Greeks. So when you look at your, let me see your apocrypha. When you look at this apocrypha, what our enemies did, they took the Greek history out of the book. That's you know right. why? Because if this is in the book, you can make a connection we to who you are. Yeah. That's why Everything they took it out. Now have. I'm going to show you something. Yeah. Give me in the Apocrypha, 1 Maccabees chapter exactly. 3 and verse 48. Because today, today, who is this right here? 
Bring when we up. look on the side, ladies and gentlemen, who is this? Who is this today? Well, he he took the name of. Who do we call Jesus. this right here today? We, well, they call him Jesus. They call him who? They call him. Jesus. They call him what? And so they say that this name. is Jesus Christ. And right. We're gonna show you why they had to take this out of the Bible. You ain't looking at no unlearned men. This is why they had to take it out of the Bible. To teach this our right people, here. you're the greatest people on the earth. It's been hidden for you the from over 500 right years here. in this country, and they spent billions upon billions of dollars yeah. so that you don't know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Give me that. Amen. The book of First Maccabees, chapter three, verse forty-eight. Bring it up. Oh. And laid open the book of the law. Our enemies laid open. This is the book of the law. They laid open the book of the law. Come on. Wherein the heathen, wherein who? The heathen, the other nations, had sought to paint the likeness of their images. They sought to paint the likeness of their images. Now, when you look at Jesus Christ before the Renaissance era. This is what's called the Renaissance era. This is Jesus Christ before the Renaissance era. Yeah, this is right. what David looked like. This is what Jeremiah looked like. This is what all the prophets of the Bible look like. Now today, we got this right here. We got, this is Leonardo da Vinci's painting right. of Jesus Christ. His name was Cesare Borgia. That's right. His name was Cesare Borgia. They took Cesare Borgia and they sat right there and painted him and made him the new image of Jesus Christ. Let's get revelations real quick. Let's get revelations so that you're gonna find out, sisters, the reason this information is hidden because you are the princesses of the earth. There ain't another the woman that can do what you do. Empress. But you must oh, remember, God, no, you must remember this. God punished you for a reason. He ain't punished them. They enjoy life, look at them. They going back home to their nice boats, wow. their big houses, their bills paid. You going back to the slums and the ghetto, hoping That's you can pay for your next meal. That's hoping that you got the money for your life bill. Hoping that you can take care of the family. That's our plot. Bring Why? Because we are the children of God. That's We're the children of Israel that God punished. Read what you got. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus Christ. The root word in Revelation is revealed. Why does Jesus Christ have to be revealed? Because Christ knew something. He knew that in these last days, his image would be changed. He knew in these last days that people would see this as Jesus Christ. Because what? We just read that they laid open our books and they painted their images. When you go into the church, you don't see Moses as a black man. Right. You see Moses as a white man. Right. When you close your eyes to pray, you don't see God as a black man. Right. You see God as a white man. That's right. This is what has happened to us in slavery. This image has been embedded and planted in us. And we must uproot it and cast it away. Read right. on. The revelation of Jesus Christ, on, you know. which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. To show unto his servants. Get me service, because who are the servants of God? You, you, know. you are the servants of God. We are the servants of God. He chose our forefathers. We are the children of the forefathers that he chose. Give me that real quick. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 55. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. The children of Israel are the servants. We're the same children that were put in captivity. Now go back to Revelations. Read. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. These are things that must shortly come to pass. Jump to verse 14. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Let's examine this because we all got the Bible, right? We didn't have the Bible all these years. Everybody don't God have said, the Bible, the Bible says, the hold on, wait a minute. He says, read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Is this white and woolly hair? So that's already one strike. This hair is not white. This hair is not woolly. Come on. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. He said his eyes were a flame of fire. Come on. And his feet. Now when we look at your feet, your feet, sister, are brown. Your feet are the same color as your hands. And his feet, like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Yellow. What color is brass? Uh, gold. Gold? What color is brass? Brown. Gold is brass is what? Brown. brown. Brass is brown. That's common sense. Read it again. And his feet. And his feet. Like a to fine brass. The Bible says that Jesus Christ's feet was like fine brass. If you took your shoes off, would your feet be almost the same color as your hands? 
Wear something like that, and your hands, are they the same color as your face? Something like that, right? So, obviously, if Christ's feet were as fine brass, but not just fine bad brass, brother. You hear me, brother? Brother with the mask on, red and black right there. How you doing? Yeah, brother, you. How you doing, man? Doing pretty good? I got a question. I just asked the sister. Because I can see your legs. Your legs and your feet, they're around the same color, right? Right? They're around the same color. So, read that part again. And his feet, like unto fine brass. It said that Christ's feet was like unto fine. I mean, it looked like fine brass, but not just fine brass. Let's see what what else was what, what else was going on with that brass. As if they burned in a furnace. If you take brass that's already brown and you burn it in a furnace, what color does it turn? Huh? It's gonna turn darker, right? Because I if I burn brass and I burn brass. Somebody Google burnt brass. Bring it up. You got a phone? Put it up on your phone. Google burnt brass. If you burn brass, there you go. Google it, brother. If you Google burnt brass, you're going to see that that burnt brass is going to turn real dark. So the Bible is describing Christ as a real dark-skinned man. That's right. So why do we have this in our... That's burnt... Y'all see that? He Bring just Googled... Up. He just Googled burnt brass. So the Bible tells us that what Christ looked like. Why don't we like that? Because the black man and woman in America, they can't stand to think that Christ actually looks like them. Bring it out. It is a fearful thing when you say that the greatest man to ever walk the earth was a black man. That's right. That brings fear in some people. But you're looking at men that that don't fear. Why? Because we understand now the black man is a chosen man. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.